Hello OT learners and welcome to the OT Biology series. In today's video, we want to look at what the microscope is. Now before we begin, let's have a look at the overview of what we are going to have in today's OT Biology series under the topic microscope. So today, we will first of all be talking about the introduction and then types of microscopes and then we we'll further continue to look at what the hand lens is and its uses as well. Then we proceed to look at what a compound light microscope is or what an optical microscope is. And then from there, we proceed to look at the parts of an optical microscope and their various uses. And then we finalize today's video with the uses of microscopes. So let's begin with the introduction and types of microscope that we have. Biological organisms vary in size and shapes. Some are unicellular while others are multicellular. Some are large and visible to the naked eye while others are extremely small to be seen with the naked eye. Now, for us as scientists to be able to observe biological organisms and structures which are extremely small, that is, they are less than 0.1 millimeters in size, the human eye needs to be aided by a special optical instrument known as the microscope. And hence the reason why we want to look at or study what microscopes are and then their various uses and then the parts and then how to use the microscopes to observe biological organisms. So what then is a microscope? A microscope is a high precision optical instrument that uses lens or combination of lenses to produce highly magnified images of small specimens or objects which are too small to be seen with the naked or the unaided eye. To, to simply put, a microscope is an optical device that helps to visualize or to magnify smaller biological units or smaller biological specimen for us to be able to observe them much more bigger and clearer. Now, the use of a microscope for biological studies is termed microscopy. Now, let's have a look at the types of microscopes that we have. Basically, we have three main kinds of microscopes. So we are going to be looking at these kinds of microscopes one after the other. So firstly, we have what we call the simple and compound light or optical microscope. So this is the first class or the first category of microscopes that we have. Secondly, we have what is known as the stereoscopic microscope, which is also the second type of microscope that we have. Lastly, we have what is called the electron microscope, which is also the, a specific type of microscope for specific uses. Now, let's have a look at what the hand lens is and the various uses of a hand lens. So, what is a hand lens? A hand lens is a simple magnifying device with a bicombus lens mounted in a frame. Its magnifying power depends on the lens mounted in the frame. Now, a hand lens with a lens with magnifying power of 5x magnifies the object 5 times bigger than its actual size. So what a hand lens does is you use it to magnify an object or a specimen to appear much bigger than it is in real life in case you don't have a microscope to visualize your specimen. Now let's look at the parts of a hand lens and their uses as well. So the first part of the hand lens we want to look at is what is called the frame. Now the frame is used to hold the bicombus lens or the lens in place. So the, the, the frame holds the lens that is used to magnify the object in position so that it can be used and focused on the specimen to be able to visualize it in a much bigger form. We want to look at the second part we want to look at is what we call the biconvex lens or the convex lens. 
Now the convex lens is used to magnify biological specimens. The magnification power of the lens determines how large the specimen can be enlarged. So the lens that we have or we can see over here is a convex lens and it is used to magnify the biological specimen that you want to observe. It is used to magnify it into a large or bigger version of the image. Now, depending on the magnification power of the lens, that determines how large your uh, magnified image is going to be. Now, the last part of the hand lens that I want to look at is what is called the handle. Now, the handle is used to focus the lens on the specimen until it can be viewed much more clearly. So, if you are trying to observe a specimen, you use the handle to aid in focusing on the specimen until you can view or observe your specimen much more clearer. So what is the use of a hand lens? The hand lens is used to magnify biological specimen and make the tiniest details appear larger than in real life. Now let's have a visualization of what we are saying that hand lens are used to magnify even the tiniest bit of details to appear much more larger than in real life. So assuming we have a, biologist, a biological specimen with details very difficult to visualize because they are very small size and then we decided to add what a hand lens with a very big magnifying power to visualize our biological specimen. We get to realize that if you want to observe an ant which is very small and you can distinguish between the parts of the ant. If you use a hand lens, in the end, you are getting a much bigger and a much more detailed um, magnified image of the ant. Now, the, the result that you are getting, okay, after magnification is very detailed and the body part can be easily visualized. So as we can see over here, the ant over here, we can barely tell the number of tell the number of segments the abdomen is divided into. But over here, we can uh, clearly see the number of segments that the abdomen of the ant is divided into. As well as we can observe the thorax and then the various the prothorax, the meta, and then the the mesothorax as well. We can visualize the the head, the antennae, and then the mouth part as well as the eye. And then we can see that the legs are into what are divided into different 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 sections as well so with the help of the hand lens we can be able to visualize much more clearly what a small organism is supposed to look like and the very details that can be found on this particular organism now let's proceed to look at what the compound light or the optical microscope is so what is a compound light or an optical microscope? Now, it is the most common of all the types of microscopes and it is readily available in most biological laboratories and schools and in other research institutions as well. Now, it is most often referred to as a high power microscope. It uses glass lenses to view both living and dead tissues and organs. It has a magnification power range between times 10 to a thousand so you can use a compound light microscope to magnify objects between the range of times 10 to times thousand now depending on the particular type of optical microscope you're using this range may differ but basically what we are trying to say is that they are used to observe both living and dead tissues and organs as well as well as unicellular organisms and protozoans and fungi now it is called a compound light microscope because in order to enlarge an image, a single light passes through a series of lenses in a line where each lens magnifies the image over the previous one. So the compound light basically operates that it takes light from the light source, then it, it reflects it onto the specimen to be observed, then the lenses magnify that image, and then another series of lenses also magnify that image until the observer is able to view the magnified image through the eyepiece. So that is basically how the optical microscope works. 
Now let's look at the part of the compound light or the optical microscope. So over here, we can see at the top over here, we have what we call the eyepiece. And then the tube we can see over here is what we call the eyepiece tube. We can see a nozzle over here that we, that we can easily rotate to change the magnification power of the objective lenses over here. And so that part or that section is what we call the revolving nose piece or the rotating nose piece. Now we have the various lenses that are used to magnify the image on the slide and uh, for the observer to observe and these lenses are what you call the objective lens we have when we place the specimen for the specimen stage we have a mirror for reflecting light we have a stage sorry we have a base for providing stability to the microscope we have a handle then we have uh, as you can see uh, some line over here that is what we call the stage holder clamp it is actually a clamp that is found on the stage and it's used to hold the slide prepared in position so that you can easily observe your specimen. Then we have these two guys, they are what we call the coarse adjustment or the coarse focus knob and then the fine focus knob. So the bigger one is called the coarse focus knob and then the smaller one is what we call the fine focus knob. Now let's have a look at the, uh, the functions of each of these parts of the microscope. So the first one I want to look at is what we call the eyepiece. Now the eyepiece consists of a series of lenses mounted in a tube at an upper end of the microscope. Two kinds of compound light microscope occur depending on the eyepiece. So we have a monocular microscope which has one eyepiece and then we have the binocular which has two eyepiece lenses. So this is a typical example of a monocular microscope the binocular microscope has two eyepieces where you can use both eyes to observe the magnified image at the same time so what is the function of the eyepiece its basic function is to look at the focused magnified image projected by the objective lenses and magnify that image a second time before your eye looks at the image of the specimen so what it does is it magnifies the already magnified image by the objective lens and it magnifies that image again into a much larger image for the viewer to be able to observe through the eyepiece. So that is the function of the eyepiece. So we want to look at the revolving or the rotating nose space. So this is a rotating turret located above the stage on the compound microscope that can hold multiple objective lenses of various magnifications. So we can see that this side actually rotates and it allows you to change the magnification power of the lenses that we have over here to use a specific one of them for a specific specimen. So what is the function? By rotating the objectives into the light path and over the specimen, you can observe various magnifications of the specimen during examination so this rotating nose piece allows you to rotate and change the objective lenses for it to have various or varying magnifications of the specimen that you have mounted on your microscope the objective lenses they are located on the revolving nose piece and are the lens systems closest to the specimen they have varying magnification power and hence produce images of varying magnifications. What is the function of these objective lenses? They gather light passing through the specimen and then project a magnified image up into the body of the microscope. So the, what the objective lenses does is the light reflected by the mirror onto the specimen, they gather that image and then produce a magnified image of that particular light and then they direct that magnified image into the eye the eyepiece tube and then the eyepiece further magnifies that for the viewer or the observer to observe so we want to look at the specimen stage now this is a platform beneath the objective lenses on which the slide or object to be observed is placed upon it has a smooth flat surface and can be rectangular or circular. So what is the function? 
the function of this platform okay the function of the specimens page is that this is a platform on which the slide or the specimen to be observed is placed upon before viewing through the lenses the illuminating mirror or the reflecting mirror now this is usually a concave mirror located under the specimen stage and above the base of the compound light microscope the function it is used to reflect external light source such as sunlight onto the specimen through the condenser found under the stage so what the, uh, the mirror does is it's reflect or it's used to direct external source of light or sunlight onto your specimen through the condenser found under the stage of the microscope in this way you have a light source for you to be able to visualize the image now it is this light that passes through the condenser and through the, the prepared slide or the, the specimen you are trying to observe that the objective lenses takes and then produce a magnified image of so now let's talk about the base. Now this is the bottom support part of the microscope that holds the microscope in place. It is directly attached to the handle of the microscope as we can see or observe over here. So the base is directly attached to the handle of the microscope. What does it do? It provides balance, stability and rigidity to the microscope. So the base, just like our legs, uh, our legs, the human legs, provides us with stability and balance. The same, uh, the same goes for the base of the microscope. It provides uh, balance and stability to the microscope, so that the observer or the scientist can be able to use the microscope without having any difficulties in using the device. So, we want to talk about the focus knobs. Now, they are found on the handle of the microscopes and are closer. To the body tube we have a bigger one called the cross focus knob which is what we can see or observe over here and then we have a smaller one called the fine focus knob this smaller version we have over here now what is the function of the focus knobs they are used to adjust the focus of the microscope on the specimen the better the focus is adjusted the clearer the magnified image is viewed uh, from the eyepiece and then the vice versa so sometimes when you're observing uh, magnified specimens through the microscope, you get to realize that sometimes the, the image appears to be blurred. So you need to use the cause or the, the fine focus knob to adjust the focus on the specimen for it to be able to visualize the, the magnified image much more clearer without it being blurred. So that is the function of the focus knob. It is used to make sure that the object or the specimen that you are observing it is of uh, the image is clearer and not blurred so you use the focus knob to focus on the image to get but a clearer image and not a blurrer image now let's talk about the handle or the arm now this is the component of the microscope which contains the focus mechanism and support the stage now when moving a microscope, this is the part you should grab with one hand while putting your other hand under the base to provide good balance and protection to the microscope. What is the function of the handle? It provides stability and rigidity to the microscope. It also helps in moving the microscope around much more easily. So if you want to move the microscope around, you use the handle. If you want to adjust it so that you can be able to observe uh, the specimen you can you can see that it is tied over here you can use it to adjust the microscope to a particular degree that is much more convenient for you to be able to observe through the eye base now let's look at uh what is the use of the stage hold at uh, the stage holder clamp now they are found on the stage of the microscope and they can be easily adjusted to hold firmly in place prepared slides what is their function they are used to hold in place prepared slides for easy visualization during experiments so when you want to observe a tissue for instance you need to prepare the slide and most likely in most cases you have to dye the slide now 
if you place it on the slide uh, on the stage sorry and then you want to observe assuming the microscope is slanted like this you get to realize that the slide is going to try to fall off the stage because of how the microscope is tilted so for you to avoid that use the stage holder clamp to hold the slide firmly in place so that you can use the revolving nose piece to adjust the the eyepiece uh, that you want to use to observe your organism or your perfect slide so that is the function of the stage holder clamp it is used to hold the slide in place for you to easy uh, for you to easily visualize your specimen now let's talk about the uses of microscopes now before we talk about the uses i want to say that we are not just talking about the uses of the optical microscope we are talking about a combination of uses of the microscopes in general so even though i'm, I'm going to be using the optical microscope uh, as the image in that slide it doesn't mean those are the uses of just the optical microscope but it is the uses of all the microscopes together all right so let's have a look at the uses of the microscopes that we have so firstly a microscope can be used for tissue analysis so like i said you can prepare a slide containing the tissue it can be whether a plant tissue or an animal tissue you can prepare it mount it onto the stage and you can visualize that using the microscope secondly uh, you can use the microscope to observe unicellular organisms you can also use them to observe fungi and then protozoans or even sometimes a uh, much more bigger like a uh, much more bigger and better versions of the microscope can be used to observe or visualize viruses and other bacteria as well uh, for medical or biological studies we also use the microscope for examining forensic evidence so for instance during a crime scene after a crime has occurred you see experts coming over to take forensic evidence now these evidences are sent back to the laboratory to be analyzed and then they use microscope for these uh analyzations uh and stuff so that is one of the uses of microscope and then we also use the microscope to monitor the health of an ecosystem and the diversity of the of some organisms in a particular ecosystem so if you want to observe the diversity of organisms in a particular environment over a long period of time uh, sometimes you need to take sample and visualize them under the microscope for it to be able to make meaningful deductions from the the help of the ecosystem over a long period of time now we also use the microscope in studying the role of a protein within a cell so for the biochemists that um, mainly focus on the, the importance of proteins within cells and their chemical reactions and stuff uh, we use microscope very powerful ones to study uh, the role of proteins within cells in the laboratory or the research labs we also use the microscope in studying atomic structures and sometimes and more often the structure of rocks so if you want to study the pattern of a rock okay how the layers of the rocks are arranged to form that particular rock we use microscopes to study the structure of rocks as well as we also use the microscope to study the atomic structure of the various elements and atoms that we have so these are some very few uses of the microscopes that we have there are fast uses of the microscopes online you can research them and have a better understanding and much more examples of the uses of the microscope but for now for the sake of this presentation i'm just going to be sharing with you these few or these six uses of microscopes in general so thank you so much for staying with me until the end of this uh, biology series this is the online tutor and this is the OT biology series. Thank you so much once again for watching. And uh, if you're new to the channel, kindly consider subscribing. And then don't forget to turn on the notification icon or the bell so that you do not miss any, any of the latest tutorials from the online tutor. So until the next time, this is the online tutor and uh, be blessed. See you next time. Bye.